all right you guys so my last video talking about night blue got a lot of attention got a lot of views and this next clip from night blue is actually huge it's the realest i've ever heard night blue talk so here we go you're so sad when you play league yeah i hate this game i hate this company i hate this community i hate everything about league i'm only playing this as filler because i have nothing else to do And that's literally the clip. Like, he doesn't sugarcoat it at all. Now, what pushed him this point and why he's saying this, I have no idea. Like, for me, I've always been okay with the community. Like, I'm okay with people trash talking. I'm okay with people having differences of opinion up to the point where Riot started banning me because of the community's opinion. And so at that point, I actually couldn't play the game anymore. Like, I physically could not play the game. I 100% feel his frustration with the community. Like, for me, I don't vibe with most people in the league community. But the way I've always been, and growing up, I had a group of like eight to nine solid friends. And it was kind of a click, I guess, if you will. And in that group or a click, we didn't care what anyone else thought. So, everyone else was basically npcs and like for an example of how little we care what other people thought i remember there was a time where we went to denny's in the middle of our meal two of our friends started wrestling on top of the table for fun looking back on it people in the denny's were probably looking at us like wtf but at the time they just thought it was funny but it just goes to show how little me and my friends care what other people thought and that's kind of how i've been in the league community like i have the group of people where i kind of vibe with but everyone else is just npcs like i don't care what they think so naturally with my mindset i've been immune to all the criticism if people criticize me i don't care because we don't think the same way like and that's fine like i I've always been fine with coexisting with people with other opinions. I think it's great for the game that different people have different opinions. It makes the game interesting. And the way the game is today, I don't think there's many people with different opinions. For example, people that think it's okay to give up in games, they have all gotten banned from the game. And like I said, you guys, I don't know where Nightblue's coming from. I don't know if he necessarily shares my opinions about leaving games, but I do think he shares the frustration that I have that games are too long. There's a lot of really frustrating situations where you know you're going to lose, but you can't leave the game. And I think the no leaving games policy is where a lot of the frustration stems from, especially when you're trying to climb and be the best because at high reload, there's a lot of situations where the game is so obviously over or even if it's not obvious to your teammates you yourself knows the game's over and you don't want to waste your time in the game and for me i kind of created league streaming back in the day before twitch was even a thing there was a site called own 3d and i was one of the major people on own 3d and my stream used to be kind of similar to night blue stream where he has really high energy and when you have really high energy and you're stuck in a situation that's completely a waste of time waste of effort it kind of drains you and you feel like what's the point of me being here why am i putting my high energy stream through this toxic situation where we can't win and there's no point of playing the game. That's where I'm kind of jealous of Ninja because Fortnite is the complete polar opposite of that. Whenever you think you're going to lose in Fortnite, you can just back out. Right when you die in Fortnite, new game, boom. It's the most perfect streaming game. If League really understood that, it would make it so you can leave games whenever you want. And if you're a really competitive person, you don't want games to be stomps. Like I'll bring up another example from my childhood is that we would play football all the time. And the way we would play is we would try to even out the team skill wise. And if one team started getting beat too bad, we would just redraft both teams and try to get the teams as even as possible because we wanted competitive games. Like we wanted competition. And that's where I come from when I leave games in league is that when I think a game is pointless and I don't see the competitive value, what's the point of me being in the game? Me and Nightblue may not agree on a lot of things, but I think it is really important for him to come out and say this because he is a huge part of the league community. And I know there's people on my Nightblue video saying that they're glad that he's leaving. You should not be glad that anyone's leaving. Like, it's fine if you don't like his content. If you click next to a video, you can say, I don't want to see videos from this guy anymore. Saying someone should not exist in the community because they're different is a terrible mindset. And you guys that keep supporting this mindset, you're enabling Riot to keep going the path they're going. If you stop enabling Riot, they might actually change the game and make it better for everyone. And so what I'm getting at is that even if you disagree with me, even if you think no one should ever leave games, or you disagree with Nightblue and you think the community is amazing, at least look at the situation and be like, they have different opinions and I'm fine with that. And yes, at the end of the day, if people can leave games yes that will affect you but i guarantee there will not be as many people leaving games as you think if there's elo on the line if there's ranking on the line people aren't just going to leave games randomly they're going to have a reason to leave the game like the original reason why people couldn't leave games was because in dota 1 there was no ranking system and so people would leave games for no reason whatsoever and there was no incentive to play the game out but now there's an incentive like there's a ranking i literally just played a game where i died in lane i didn't leave the game because i wanted to win like i wanted that elo and so what it comes down to you guys is levers are not the problem if you guys think levers are the problem then you don't understand the game and i'm telling you guys to talk toxicity in league is stemming from people not being able to leave the games ultimately as a streamer you feel trapped and i think this is where night blue's coming from if you can leave games i think people feel a lot more free when they're playing league and they wouldn't feel like it's like a job for them like they're forced to play this game it would feel more of like let's try to vibe together and let's not talk trash to our team because if we talk too much trash to our team they could leave the game like if we spam ping our teammate like yeah maybe that's gonna piss him off to the point where he's gonna leave like so we're not gonna do that like right now it's like oh haha ha, you're stuck with me i'm gonna spam ping you because you can't leave the game oh you're gonna leave the game oh you're banned haha ha. that type of stuff is what really has killed the game for a lot of people i think and i think people are just done trying to act fake people just want to be real like people just want to be themselves and like in this clip nightblue's just being so real like let's just watch it one more time you're so sad when you play league yeah i hate this game i hate this company i hate this community i hate everything about league i'm only playing this as filler because i have nothing else to do
That is the realest talk right there. Big up Snipe Blue, leading a movement. All right, guys, I'm playing my diamond account. I'm not sure the MMR. I think it's like mid diamond. I'm third pick here, and I don't see their top lane, so I think I'm gonna be playing a Heimerdinger this game. Heimerdinger is like my go-to blind pick. This guy blind picks Zed. Let's see what they counter him with. Sion's definitely considered a Heimer counter. Let's see if this guy's a one trick Zed or not. He's got a 56% Zed, but he hasn't played Zed in a while. His last game was a normal three days ago, so we're just gonna dodge this one. Zed's one of those champs that can straight up ruin a game if he gets counter picked. Thinking about the matchup, I think Ziggs probably runs really well into Zed. Ziggs has a lot of poke damage, and he can probably just bully Zed out of lane. And also, I got counter pick with Sion. All right, I got a first pick this game. We got a Yasuo hover, which might be grounds for a dodge right there. The thing about him hovering Yasuo is it's actually not that bad because he's basically letting us know that he wants to build a team comp around Yasuo. I really like running Singe with Yasuo because I can fling and then he can combo that with his ulti, but I don't want to first pick Singe. I'm just going to play another Heimer game. So they pick Jace and the Heimer. That's not too bad. Like the one thing I have to worry about is the Zack gank and then Jace can follow up pretty well to that. Since I'm against the Jace this game, I'm going to be running Unsealed. I'll go Mini and Dematerializer. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'll get Ultimate Hat and then Celerity for some extra movement speed so i can escape the gank the reason why i went unsealed here this lane is gonna be a heavy farm lane i'm not gonna be able to really trade with the jace very much now this is an ignite airy jace this guy's gonna be trying to go really aggro on me which he won't really be able to unless i mess up i need to rush to top level one and get my turrets up if i'm late here and jace gets in the brush first that's kind of bad because he has ignite holy crap It's fine. That's a good play by Thresh. What kind of sucks now is that I just dropped all my turrets and now I can't drop them again. So it gives Jace extra momentum in the lane. Because the thing is, he just killed my turrets. And then I could have dropped three more after that. But like, as you can see, I can still push the lane in. So it's not really a big deal. My CS is not very good. CSing with Heimer Wrench is like not the most fun thing to do. I tossed a grenade out for that CS. Not really something I usually do, but it was a cannon. If you see how many range creeps there are here, the whole wave's gonna push into me. So I'm just gonna save my turrets, let them recharge. And I'll use the turrets on the next wave to help me build momentum so I can push the Jace in. The idea here is I want them all to just crash my tower. I'll use my dematerializer for a minion that I think I can't get. Draw my turret here to help me CS too. But unfortunately, I suck. That one I don't think I can get. All right, so here's where I'm going to start hard shoving the lane. Jace has a CS advantage on me right now. But once I push this into this tower, like, I think it's going to be more even. It's going to be harder for him to CS on tower. My team's kind of getting wrecked right now. And there's really not a whole lot I can do about that. Like, they got the counter picks off, so that's kind of on them. All right, I'm going to back for my arm guard right now. Also, Jace has no TP, so now I have an item advantage in lane. All right, so Jace is backing, so I'm just going to hard shove this into the tower. There we go. He gets denied a wave, and I caught up in CS, so that's good. I just back for some boots there, because there's really no point in me just sitting in the lane. So I might as well just grab boots. Like, it's going to help me get away from a gank, too. And, like, I didn't miss a single CS for that. I'm just gonna he's gonna take this all in okay i'm actually i have to flash that that's fine though his ignite's down i missed my grenade there which was really bad i'm just gonna try to stay here i might get dove but it's a situation where i just gotta risk it the jace out of mana it's worth it to risk it i think here because jace has no mana like if i hit my grenade like i can be fine here okay he did have a little bit of mana he's got he has a flash i think i'm dead i'm dead 100 seriously oh no i missed my grenade no way no way, I missed that dude. Oh my god, that was such a fail, you guys. Dying to Jace is not too bad, but it was just a massive fail that should never have happened. I missed two grenades there that if I hit either of them, like, I would have been fine. Their Zac gave this Jace blue. I'm not really sure why. He's not gonna be able to bully me out of lane with it. And the Zac gets less XP for that, so that was kind of dumb. This is gonna be rough, because I think Zac's gonna dive me here. I don't know if I can survive a dive, but I do have my Zonius. That was good. Come on. No! Okay, whatever. That's fine. There was like a split second where he got back up. I almost got him there. That was really close. They're gonna get first tower, I think. It's kind of unfortunate. That was a pretty intense sequence of events. Like, their jungler gave their Jace blue, and then their jungler dove me as well. That's a lot to deal with. Yasuo just made a big play. He got ganked by three people and killed one of them. That was huge. All right, well, I got my zonies now, so that's really good. In terms of scaling, my items scale well. Like, Jace's items do not scale well at all. Mama Mortius does not scale. It's like a hybrid tank item. Zach's down here. Like, the Sivir's baiting so hard. That kind of sucks because they have two bottom right now, and my team's losing fights. Like, that should not be happening. Zach's in the bush. I knew it. I don't know why I flashed there, though. I didn't need to flash. Like, it just kind of caught me off guard. Like, that was a play where I just overestimated the Zach. He had no reason to dive me there. Kind of caught me off guard. And the Zach might be still here. Yeah, I think you're right, dude. Yeah, he is. That was a really good play by Yasuo. I'm trying to interrupt his E. Got it. Nice. That was a really intelligent play by the Yasuo. It kind of doesn't make sense that the Zach would just camp that bush. Like, I wasn't trying to kill the Sivir. I feel like he just really underestimated us there. Infernal's up in 15 seconds. This is bad. I'm going to grab my haunting guys, and then I'm going to try to get over there as fast as possible. Nunu's getting caught right now. That was not a time to be face checking that. Oh, this is really good. Okay, we're TPing on this, and we're going to try to contest this. Yasuo made a big play there with soloing that Annie. Please hit that. That was a big grenade. That was a huge grenade. Oh my god, no! I did not mean to do that. 
I just hit the I just hit the worst Zodius, dude. Okay, it's not gonna matter though. Let's try to grenade this guy if he goes on me. Oh my god, that was such a bad Zonius. I, I meant to hit my corrupting potion. Like I was furiously hitting it. I tried to block that. Okay, he blocked it. Nice. That was literally all because he also got that pick on Annie. If he didn't get that pick, we would not have been able to contest that. And I'm just going to go for a Leandries. I think it might just be better to go for Rylai's. Thing is, though, is I had 1,600 gold. And I wanted to be strong for that dragon fight. So I think buying the Haunted guys was good there. If I had the exact amount for Rylai's, I probably would buy Rylai's instead. Oh, nope. This is bad. This is fine, actually. Okay, got him. Okay. I don't know if I needed to grenade him there. Like... Waste my ult might have been bad. No, it's fine, I think. Yeah, it's fine. We got that guy. Is she going to flash away? Got her, I think. Yep. Oh, God. Tibbers is mad. Zach went in. Why did he go in there? Interesting play by the Zach, you guys. It's actually a good play by the Nunu. The Herald reduces the tower defense. Like, usually you can't backdoor towers, but with the Herald, you can. Alright, so I was able to pick my Leandries, and I got one component to Rylize. We could Baron. I do it really quickly, obviously, because I'm Heimer. Just do over the wall. This is, like, kind of risky, though. Oh, God, it's a smite off. So I make sure... I'm just going to burst it. He got it. Oh, my God. That was a big play by Nunu, dude. He didn't panic there at all. Okay, they have two mid, which is kind of bad for them. They can't stop this push, I don't think. Definitely not with these Baron minions. That might be a way to stop it. Oh, that was a good old, that was a good Q, I mean. Nice. Yeah, we're getting inhib tower here. Infernal's up in one minute. We just gotta wait for that Infernal, dude. That's like an auto win right there. We should be playing too aggressive. Like, that was kind of aggressive. I, I get a counter engage with my grenade. And he got stunned too, which is really good. I don't think she has flash. She might have flashed on, like, last fight. This is a little bit unnecessary. But it's fine. It's working. I'm going to flash to try to kill that guy. Oh, I almost got him. 11 HP, really? Seriously, he was down to 11 HP, dude. Oh, kill this guy. Oh, God. I didn't even see that. Okay, we killed four of them. So that's game. Oh, my God. I just realized how big my cam was for that whole game. I wonder how much I was blocking there. That's a disaster. You owe me. You don't know me. Don't you think that I get lonely?